Yes. 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 In our flesh, we don't want to forgive no one. In our flesh, we want to do this our own way. We don't want to be teachable. You're going to nail the, uh, I'm going to put, like, I have that at home. Uh, and you're going to put a nail, I know how to do it. Don't tell me how to do it. I'm just making holes in the wall instead of, you know, using a, a stud finder or, you know, following someone who knows how to do it. So, again, we just do a lot of things by trial and error when we need to humble ourselves and ask for instructions and directions. And who's our teacher? The Holy Spirit. If we don't know about the Holy Spirit, we're already already lost as a Christian. So we have to understand about the Holy Spirit. So we will not... Okay, so let me read it again. If we are truly humble, we will do things God's way. If we are proud and not humble, we will do things our own ways. We will not seek guidance from the Holy Spirit, and we will not enjoy God's grace in our lives. Okay? Because we're always fighting. We're fighting the system. Uh, instead of uh, in the system of God, remember that's a battle that we're going to lose. Uh, okay, because we win other battles against the devil. We think that we can fight against God, but it's got to be God's way, and we're going to have a smooth sailing. But if we do things our own way, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Amen. All right. So now, who's our number one example? Jesus. Jesus is okay. Always Jesus. All right. So Matthew eleven twenty eight in the Amplified, and we're going to see if Jesus was humble. Was Jesus humble? Okay, let's see. Jesus, uh, Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. Let's all read. Ready? Go. Come, everybody, ready? Go. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your soul. Is that good news? Okay, verse 29. Well, wait, in order to get that, what do we have to do? Give me 28 again. In order to get rest, ease, relief, and refreshment, what do we have to do? And, and be overburdened and release our overburden. What do we have to do? Come to me. Come to Jesus. Okay, if we don't refuse to come to him, we're going to have a heavy laden life. Amen? 29. Go. Take my, everybody, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart, and you will find rest, relief, and ease, and refreshment, and recreation, and blessed quiet for your soul. Good news? Amen. Verse 30. Ready, go. For my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh. Hard, sharp, or pressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be born. Okay, born, okay? So now, how many of us have heard and have said it's hard to be a Christian? And maybe have even said it, okay? What does the scripture say? It's not. So now, this two, either this is wrong, or we're wrong. What do you think it is? Wrong. We're wrong. Okay, it's because we're doing things our ways instead of God's ways, and that's why we're going to the bumpy roads. So we have to say, you know what? This is what the, the scriptures say. This is not what I'm living. God, I repent of the way I'm living. Teach me. Guide me. Show me what I'm doing wrong. I submit myself, and I humble myself to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. If we do that, you're going to see this is going to start manifesting in our lives. If we choose to stay in doing things our own ways, then you're in for a rough, rocky ride in Jesus' name. Okay? Anyone have a question on that? In Bible study, you can ask questions. If you don't agree, it's okay. Say it. If it's buts, say the buts. Nobody? We're all good? All right, so now. Another example for us, who was a mighty man of God in uh, the beginning, towards the beginning, towards, uh, in Genesis, the beginning of the Bible? A mighty man of God. Abraham? Okay, somebody else. Noah, give me somebody else. Before was Samson? Moses. Okay, so right there, Moses. Okay, so we all heard about Moses, right? So how was he? What do you think? 
Joseph has to look meek when he was there in the Ten Commandments. Uh, he looked handsome. He looked powerful, right? Uh, that's right. That's where we're going. We're going there. Okay, we're going there. So, Numbers 12, verse 3. He was very humble. He wasn't humble. He was very humble. All right? Um, and Numbers 12, verse 3. Numbers, not Matthew. Numbers. Follow your sheep. Oh, look at that. I was going to throw a, 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 woo, a lightning rod on him. I apologize. I said, why is this kid not following me? He's been following me by the Spirit. Look at that. Okay, ready? Let's all read. Ready? Go. Now the man Moses was very meek, gentle, kind, and humble. Or above all the men on the face of the earth. Now that's the Amplified. Look at the New King James on that one. Ready, go. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. And now, who did God use to bring the law down? Moses. And what does the Bible say? He was not. He was very humble. Very humble, okay? And now, where did Moses learn? Where did he learn his, where did he get his education for 40 years? From the Pharaohs, man. He knew what going on. And he was like uh, the son of Pharaoh. How many women do you think he had uh, while he was doing the, when he was the son of Pharaoh? He had everyone that he wanted and, uh, and all the things. Yet, uh, still God used him and molded him, and he was very humble, Okay? Some of you are looking at me strange when they say that. Because some of don't want to understand that, go. Did he have a temper? Okay. I mean. He, he murdered was, somebody. He murdered somebody. He, he hit the rock. And that's why he went. He went but that was before the he became oh, okay. humble. You right. see, how are we before we accepted the Lord Jesus? Arrogant, proud, dubbies, fools, stupid. stupid. Uh, so you name it that we were. Because I was all of the above to the power of five. You know, multiply on, on, on top of that, right or wrong? Yeah. Okay, so yes, he was before that, and he he escaped. He had to leave because he murdered somebody. So he was a murderer. Okay, so um, and he tried to hide the murder, and he got caught when he was burying the guy. And they, they saw him. Right? So if you read your Bible, you understand these things, and you say, man, if there's if God used him, he can use me. Uh, that uh, I, I can be used in Jesus' name. But we have to be humble. So now, people will make a mistake. Of, uh, about you, because when you're humble, that they might want to take advantage of you. Isn't that why a lot of us don't want to show that we're humble? Because people are going to take advantage of us, right? They'll take your kindness for weakness, right? But as Christians, right, who's got our back? Do we believe that? Then, then you, we have to understand that we God has got our back. Now, was Moses, the great Moses, did they try and take advantage of him? Who tried to take advantage of him? His brother and his own sister, Aaron and Miriam. Okay, so now we're going to see that even the closest in your family will try and take advantage of your of your meekness, of your humbleness. Okay, so let's see if this is true. So now Numbers chapter 12, verse 1, this story of um, when people try to take advantage of us. So bring it to yourselves, but we'll learn what happened here. So you, that's all read. Ready? Read. Then Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. Now, how many times did it say Ethiopian woman? Why do you think they said that? You know what the Ethiopian woman meant? means? Somebody? Dark skinned woman. Okay? And they didn't like that over there. I had a lot of fun in, in, uh, in the ministry at Fairton. When I, I taught with the Jews, uh, my Jewish brothers and sisters, not my Jewish brothers, no sisters then, my Jewish brothers, and we showed the Ten Commandments during Passover, and I asked them, what color was Moses' wife? She said, white, just because we think we see the Ten Commandments, and look at the, the Torah, see what your Torah says, and it come, like, took off and left, because they couldn't understand that Moses was married to an Ethiopian woman, so he liked the dark ladies. Okay? Huh? It, it's, I don't, I'm not 
everybody get into that one? The point is that he was married to an Ethiopian woman on this one. I'll get back to you on that answer. Okay? So here it is for this one. They spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Verse 2. Go. So they said, Has the Lord indeed only spoken through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it? So now, does God speak through all of you? So picture this now. The Lord spoke through Aaron. The Lord spoke through Miriam. The Lord speaks through all of you. Now, in your heads, because the Lord speaks through all of you, now you might say, you know what? I don't need to hear from the pastor because I hear from the God direct. I don't need to. Who is he? He ain't no different than me. Right? So, so when, when somebody says that, what's coming up on them? Pride, okay? So no, no more submission, no more humbleness, okay? No more teachable. You've just lost your teachable spirit, okay? So now this, is, and the rebellion is starting to come up in us. Verse 3. Now the man Moses was very humble, more than all men who were on the face of the earth. So it's saying there, he didn't, he didn't come down on them. He didn't say to his brother or his sister, who do you think you are? He just kept his mouth shut. Verse 4. Suddenly, who speaks? The Lord said to Moses, Aaron, and Miriam, Come out, you three, to the tabernacle of the meeting. You see how he spoke it? Why did he speak it that way? You see exclamation point there? So he said, come out, you little three, uh, over here. You know. Moses now say, oh yeah? Okay, the three of you, come outside now. Okay? It's what he's saying. So the three, what did they do? Came out. Verse 5. Then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. What happened to Moses? He didn't call Moses. He called brother, older brother and older sister. Okay? And they both went forward. Okay? Verse 6. Then he said, Hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak to him in a dream. Verse 7. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my house. Verse 8. I speak with him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? How is God talking to them? And like a father protecting, uh, you know, his. It's like some of you moms uh, or, or dads, if you have three kids or, uh, or two, and one is stronger than the other, and you say, that's your brother, man. You know, so now you, got, you made them both, but now you've got to protect one because one is being a bully. You know, towards another, towards you know, a weaker one, in one way or another. Amen. Okay. So now, how 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 dare you were not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Verse nine. So the anger of the Lord was aroused against them, and he departed. Just in case some people don't think that he was mad. Okay. Verse ten. And look what happens. And when the cloud departed from above the tabernacle, suddenly Miriam became what? Leprous, as white as snow, okay? Then Aaron turned toward Miriam, and there she was, a leper, okay? Is that good? Not for her, right? Why was she turned as, into a leper? Because of her pride, because she spoke against her, her baby brother, uh, and, and for no reason at all, okay? Uh, in, 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 uh, she, should, she should have kept her mouth shut. Not speak against the man of God. Verse 11. So Aaron said to Moses, Oh my Lord! Now how is he calling him now? Lord now. All of a sudden there's no more baby brother. Now he's calling Moses Lord now. Now he's not putting himself equal with him. Now he's saying, Oh my Lord, please do not lay this sin on us in which we have done foolishly and in which we have sinned. He's acknowledging that they messed up. Okay? Verse uh, 12. Please do not let her be as one dead, whose flesh is half consumed, 
when he comes out of his mother's womb. Verse 13. 